Hello, and welcome back to Growing Up in Scientology. So today I want to discuss the subject of the elderly. I want to talk about how Scientology feels about the elderly, uh, both Scientology at large and the Sea Org specifically. Uh, so I was reminded about this subject recently and decided to do a video about it. Um, when a friend of mine told me about uh, a Scientologist he knows, who's been taking care of his father for a while. And his father, um, you know, he's not very, very old. He's not very, very ill, but he's at that stage in life where he requires some attention. He requires some care. And um, so it's been going on for, he, he's been having to take care of the father for a while. And recently he put him into an assisted living facility for the first time. And uh, you know, that's not unusual when someone gets to that stage of life where they need more full-time care than the family's prepared to provide. That's totally normal. Um, but what wasn't exactly normal is that uh, the Scientologist also started having conversations with the father about, you know, maybe, maybe possibly it would be a good idea to start considering whether or not, you know, maybe it would really be best to, you know, just drop the body. And drop the body is Scientology's euphemism for dying. The father's not terminally ill. The father is not living with chronic pain. Um, he's not debilitated. He's not bedridden. He's just entered that stage of life where from the point of view of a Scientologist, he's now receiving more than he's giving, to put it kind of crudely. Um, you know, he's, he's being helped more than he's helping others. And that makes him a burden. It's a burden on the family. It's a burden on Scientology if there's a Scientologist in the family. And it's a burden on society from the viewpoint of Scientology. Uh, quick lesson for new viewers. Scientologists believe that the human body is animated by an immortal spiritual being that they call a Thetan and that Thetans cannot die. They're incapable of dying. They live on forever, lifetime after lifetime, picking up a new body when the old body dies. And um, the fact that Thetans don't remember any of their previous lives uh, just is part of the Scientology story for how this planet is a trap for Thetans how every time you die, you get your Thetan memory wiped at the Between Lives implant stations that exist on Mars and the moon or whatever. So, uh, you know, really exciting and exotic stuff. So what it, what, it, what all this kind of boils down to is that Scientologists believe, and, and maybe it's not all Scientologists, Scientologists will inevitably arrive to the point where they believe that the only thing worth living for really is Scientology. Scientology says you've already lived trillions and trillions of lifetimes. Anything you could possibly do in this lifetime or the next lifetime, you've already, you've already done before. You've, you've already done it all before. Um, no, nothing is new. None of it is, is exciting. Nothing, is, uh, nothing that you could do or have already done is particularly valuable. Um, with one exception, Scientology. They say Scientology is the one thing and the only thing you have not already done before. And, um, and that Scientology is the most valuable thing that, there, that you could do because, another quick history lesson for new viewers, Scientologists believe that only Scientology can free Thetans from this trap that we call Earth and restore a Thetan's ability to skip the between lives areas where you have your Thetan memory wiped and so that you can um, you know, remember everything forever without losing in between lives. Um, that Scientology is the only way that you can become free from being stuck in a body and be able to uh, leave and go in and out of your body at will. Um, and that only Scientology can restore the godlike powers that Scientology believes Thetans have, like telekinesis, ESP, teleportation, and just being able to create something from nothing just with your thoughts. So <clears throat> that's kind of a lot of stuff. That's, um, that's a high bar. That's a lot that Scientology promises there. And um, if you've ever wondered why Scientologists seem to take themselves a little too seriously, like why is Tom Cruise so oddly intense when discussing Scientology? This is the reason. These are the things, these things that I've mentioned are what Scientologists believe Scientology is fighting for. And um, it's quite a story. Uh, it sets up a state of mind in Scientologists where the only thing that ultimately matters in life is Scientology. And this has serious consequences for the elderly when they get to a stage in life where they are no longer able to either personally receive Scientology auditing due to any variety of health problems, 
or when they're no longer able to contribute to Scientology as a staff member or a Sea Org member or to contribute financially. Um, or when someone gets to a stage in life where they are unintentionally impeding another Scientologist's ability to contribute to Scientology or to get auditing, right? So if, so if you have a father, and this isn't the scenario that my friend was talking about, but if you have someone who gets to an advanced stage and they require so much time and attention and the bills are stacking up and, and, and there's a Scientologist in the family and all the Scientologist's time and money is being dedicated to um, assisting with the care of this father, um, the, the, someone's gonna come along and sit this person down and say, I think we should have a talk about what the most ethical, most pro-survival solution is to this situation, right? Um, and so the person becomes, it, it, just, it just gets reduced down to the person just viewed as nothing more than a drag on the group, right? They're, this person is no longer able to put their shoulder to the wheel to further our cause. And so the best thing for this person to do is to drop a body, pick up a new body so that they can start over fresh, and maybe in 12 or 15 years or whatever, they'll be able to contribute to Scientology just as much as anyone else. And, you know, it'll be a win-win for, for all parties. This is how Scientologists think about the elderly when they enter that stage of life where they require a lot of help. Um, Scientology has a principle that says a being is only as valuable as he can serve others. This is something L. Ron Hubbard says. You know, he was kind of saying it in a way to be like, look, I know I'm the guy at the top. I know I'm the source of everything, but I'm here to serve you and I'm only as valuable as I can serve you. Like he, he wasn't, the way he said it was supposed to be kind of a positive thing, but it has a negative on the other side of the coin. Once you're in a position where you can no longer serve others, eh, you're not considered very valuable anymore. This is why there are no church run or church funded retirement homes or assisted living facilities for Sea Org members. When a Sea Org member is old enough that they can no longer contribute to the Sea Org in a meaningful way, or they're chewing up more resources, time and money, than they're bringing into the organization. The Sea Org feels that the most ethical thing for this person to do would be to just die and start over fresh and stop wasting everyone's time. Like really, this person would be viewed as, as unethical for wanting to continue to advance their life. I can think of so many examples that I've seen of this attitude being either overtly demonstrated or being communicated in Scientology. And it, it's not just the Sea Org. This attitude exists among Scientology staff members who are not in the Sea Org. Um, this attitude exists amongst the Scientology public, probably more so against the the, the truly, truly dedicated ones, but the truth is th those public that are the truly dedicated ones, they've usually already spent time on, on staff or in the CERG previously anyway. Um, I am aware that a Scientologist watching this video, if that were ever to happen, um, could easily just watch this video and be like, you know, that's bullshit. That, that is not true for all Scientologists. My, my, my grandfather's 90 years old and I don't want him to die. Look, I am not trying to say that all Scientologists walk around wishing that everyone over 75 years of age would just drop dead. I'm not trying to create this impression, this exaggerated concept. There's plenty of, exam there's plenty of examples where someone uh, could be uh, at an advanced age and not by that very nature have any negative impact on Scientology or a Scientologist, right? It's only whether this thing's negatively impacting people, starting to become a burden to the organization. I'm talking about things like CIRG members who are too old to be on post regularly. Scientologists who are too old or too unhealthy to continue receiving auditing. Scientologists who are caring for family members and the time and money involved in providing that care is preventing the Scientologist from paying for more auditing and receiving more auditing. In these circumstances, you can bet that someone is gonna come along and have a heart to heart with the Scientologist or the Sea Org member and say something like, you know, let's take a look at what would be the most pro-survival solution to this scene. What would really be the most ethical thing to do here, right? Someone might sit them down and be like, you've got to, maybe you should try to get this, whoever it is, to understand that the most ethical and pro-survival thing, the most ethical and pro-survival solution would be to just drop the body and we'll see him again soon. It's the best thing for them. It's the best thing for you. It's the best thing for everyone. This is the kind of conversation you think would maybe only occur when someone's like been in a coma for three years and the doctors are trying to get the family to understand that 
this is really just delaying the inevitable and you know kind of like the pull the plug conversation but um you know look in scientology all it takes is for you to no longer be able to pay to pay for auditing anymore or receive auditing and um or not being able to continue to show up for your post and uh you know people want you to freaking die so if you want to stay alive in Scientology for long, don't get old and don't run out of money because someone's going to come along and uh, most likely pull the plug on your ass. So, all right, that's my uplifting message for the day. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll be having more videos out this week and I'll see you guys soon.